Redditors who have been clinically dead. What did you experience in death, if anything? I was dead for 6 minutes. I was laying on the gurney and I was getting colder. Somewhere my body started warming up and everything became really calm and peaceful. I was not longer in pain. All the noise from it just went away. It was really enjoyable. I was thinking about my daughter and I was remembering all the things we had done. Slowly it was just black and nothing. There was no knowledge of anything. I explain it as it was like before I was born. Then the worst thing in the world is being revived. I starting hearing loud noises. I felt this massive pain. Then there was the nastiest stench ever. The smell was like every dead animal had crawled in my nose. The smell was so bad I started vomiting. I remember the DRs turning me on my side and watching my vomit spray on a nurse. Dying was the most pleasant thing I have ever experienced and being revived the worse. Not really sure what happened and it still freaks me out to this day. May daughter was 4 and developed pneumonia. Her breathing would stop in her sleep so we took her into the emergency room. She was there for a total of 5 days. For the first 3 days her health kept deteriorating. And on the 3rd day my girlfriend got a call that her mother had collapsed and was taken to the hospital. She was without oxygen for 20 minutes and was declared brain dead. That night my daughter woke up and asked about grandma. No one had said anything to her or in the room with her. We asked her what did she mean. She told us that grandma came to her in a dream and said it's not your time yet. I'll go for you. Immediately the next day she was almost 100% better. That is freaking crazy. I think about death a lot. Like, an insane, worrying amount. I cry about it a lot too. I'm terrified to die. I'm terrified of what comes after. And I'm terrified of losing people I love. This thread has actually made me feel a bit better about it. So thank you OP. I lost my mom last year and I remember her telling me when I was little. Because I would say it first. That she was scared to die. I am glad to know that it isn't as bad as we both thought. Hope you will accept some hugs from an internet stranger. I have the same fear. I think about it every day and I have panic attacks. This thread does help a little. Anaphylaxis. Wasn't breathing. I considered all the hallucinations I experienced likely due to hypoxic episode until I told my mom what I saw. A middle aged man who wasn't in scrubs standing still at the end of my bed while all staff were running around and doing their business. I was having a non-verbal conversation with him and he was telling me to calm down. Focus on breathing. He wore a tropical style button down shirt. One of those old school newsboys hats and had a very pleasant demeanor. Mum showed me a photo of my grandpa that I never had seen before. And it was the guy at the foot of my bed. And he died before I was even born. That's super eerie. Comforting though. Friend of mine described it as deeply relaxing and that she could feel herself drifting away, but was brought back just as she was ready to leave. After that, she embraced life and death. She said she doesn't fear death anymore since it was so relaxing to experience. My girlfriend is anaphylactic, and it is triggered by a chemical called salicylate, found in pretty much every food. When she was in high school she had her first big reaction, and the school nurses refused to administer her epipen. Adrenaline shot, until the ambulance got there. Now obviously, having an anaphylactic reaction doesn't give you a lot of waiting time. So by the time the ambulance got to her school she was in pretty bad shape and barely conscious. The paramedics immediately administered one of her epipens. Called the nurses freaking twats and loaded her into the ambulance as her mother arrived. She continued to fade, so they gave her a direct injection of adrenaline this time. Still nothing. They give her a second direct injection of adrenaline and this time it hits her about 30 seconds later all at once. And her heart fails. She stops breathing. No pulse. Nothing. Dead to the world. For about 2 minutes and 46 seconds she was clinically dead. And the scariest thing is, she saw nothing. She tells me that when you are losing consciousness you can't tell the difference between waves of drowsiness and when your body actually shuts down. All she saw was the darkness of her eyelids. And it felt like going into an extremely calm sleep where she couldn't hear or feel anything. And she didn't mind it. All despite the fact her mother and the paramedics were screaming at her to keep her eyes open and the ambulance was flying towards the hospital. She miraculously just came back to life almost 3 minutes later as they were giving her chest compressions. And the cardiologist that assessed her later stated that all the adrenaline in her body was enough to not only stop her heart, 
but to also restart it with a little help from the paramedic pumping it around. But still do this day, she can't differentiate falling asleep after a long day, and dying. Overdosed. Flatlined. Didn't see a dang thing. When they hit me with Narcan, I woke up really mad ripping IVs out of my arms. Cursing out the poor, amazing staff who saved my life. Good times 6 years ago now with all that crap behind me luckily. A black void. Then waking up and are surrounded by people running around like crazy. I was cold af. But in reality, just room temp. Had to add and say that it was relatively peaceful. Like being wrapped in a big warm blanket. My wife and I discussed this at length. Four years ago, she died twice in three months. Needing full resuscitation both times. Both were lengthy rescues. One resuscitation was off and on for nearly 40 minutes. I asked her later when she had recovered if she remembered anything at all during the times she was clinically dead. She remembered nothing. Blackness. No light. No relatives and former pets waiting for her. Just. Black. Thankfully. Also no pain. She finally passed 18 months ago. And I hope she felt no pain or worry the final time. I'm sorry for your loss and for what sounds like a lot of trauma leading up to it. I know three people that have been clinically dead and have come back. What they described is something much different than what people are talking about here. They all said, if you paraphrase, that it feels as if you're passing out. Someone compared it to ODIing on whippets, nitrous oxide, a feeling of your conscience slowly getting focused into one point in the exact middle of your head, while your limbs lose feeling in a tingling pleasant way and then you lose consciousness. One girl said that when she came back into conscience she was hallucinating because she had no idea what was going on and that she started dreaming of something safe, that is her mother hugging her in a warm bed. I coded after surgery. I remember being able to see and hear everything and understand what was happening, but I couldn't physically feel anything. It was deeply unsettling. I died twice after I got MRSA into my heart area after a major surgery. I don't remember much of anything when I was out. Cliche as it was I saw a light, but dang that year sucked. Understatement of the year mayo. Yeah that year where I died sucked pretty bad. Not mine but the head of my program was in a horrible car accident. She was dead for a few minutes on the scene while paramedics worked on her. She said it was the most amazing feeling she's ever experienced. It was blank black nothing, but that was perfectly fine, and she felt a comfort she can't even explain. She remembers being angry at the man working on her when she finally came back to her body because she wanted to stay there. She told us she can't wait to experience it again when it's really her turn. Comma she told us she can't wait to experience it again when it's really her turn. This was honestly very comforting in a weird and unexpected way. A friend of mine described death. She was technically dead twice, as being surrounded by darkness and floating with some sort of warm gel-like substance covering her. She never wanted to leave that state. Oh my GPD that literally described the tanks that the machines used in the Matrix. Oh frick. I don't know what I experienced while I was dead but when I woke back up, so to speak, I remember wanting to experience it permanently. As someone who lost his younger brother 4 months ago to psychosis induced suicide after years of painful and miserable addiction and anxiety and depression, many of these comments give me more of a sense of peace that he just couldn't be here anymore and needed to go. I'll hope he felt okay in his final moments and wasn't in the constant pain he felt 24 stroke 7 here and in his mind. Serious tag or not I'm glad the majority of the comments seem genuine. Thank you. My sister killed herself in November of last year at the age of 15. My mother couldn't take the grief and killed herself a couple of weeks ago. I hope they are both at peace, because they hated it here. No heaven. No heck. I hope it's just peace. Stories like these give me hope. I don't know if this counts, as I don't think I flatlined, but I had a huge postpartum hemorrhage after my second, and last, child was born. I lost 2.3 LTRS of blood, which I think is about half of all my blood, and considered the highest classification of blood loss before death occurs. I was given general anesthetic before I passed out on my own, but leading up to that was such a surreal experience. As someone has previously mentioned, there is this sense of acceptance, of laying back and going with it. When I first started bleeding I was scared, and panicking, 
By the time I was being wheeled into theater, I was smiling at the midwife and telling her it was going to be okay. I was delirious and euphoric and not scared at all. My vision started to go. At first it was colored spots then everything had a gray hue. As tunnel vision set in, sound became muffled, like putting my hands over my ears. The whole time, the general feeling of indifference and no urge to fight it was there. It was so calm I don't think I've ever computed just how lucky I am to be here. So a near death experience by blood loss, can confirm, not bad. The recovery though, I felt like crap for freaking weeks and had PTSD. I was so physically weak that I could barely take care of the baby and had to inject myself with anti-clotting meds for 6 weeks every day. I was dead for a very short period of time, like 30 seconds to a minute. There's a big misconception about it. It's not like sleeping at all. I'll try to explain. There's always a sort of white noise in the back of my mind. It quiets down when I sleep but it's still there. I never noticed it before I died, but I do now. I don't want to romanticize death, but when I was out, it was like this perfect nothingness. And nothingness is so hard to imagine normally, but once you experience it, and they bring you back, Part of you wishes you could have stayed. There's no positive feelings there, obviously, but it takes away everything bad too. All your stress, the nightmares, the troubles, all gone. Just nothing exists. It's beautiful in a way. I'm not suicidal at all, and hope to live the rest of a long and happy life. But I'm very much looking forward to a lack of consciousness when I do eventually pass again. And I can honestly say I don't fear death anymore. I was not the one who experienced this but it was one of my teachers I had in high school a few years ago. She was having open heart surgery in Minneapolis, Minnesota and coded three times during the surgery. When she came out of surgery and began to regain consciousness she kept speaking of all these souls that she saw. I remember her saying she was scared for them and wasn't sure what would happen to them. I can't remember exactly what she said about the souls but I do remember her saying that they had all just died in an accident. Her surgery was on the 1st of August, 2007. This was also the day that the I-35W bridge collapsed in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the same city she was in. It collapsed while she was being operated on. Clinically dead on two separate occasions. I didn't experience any visions or light and I didn't feel anything at all. It was like a switch was flipped and my existence was just shut off. Coming back was another story. Slowly I was able to hear the voices of those around me fading in, and they slowly got louder until I was able to open my eyes. That's it. Nothing spectacular. One second you're here, one second you're not. Somewhat comforting. When I was 15 I was scheduled to do a tilt table test, they lean you up at an angle on a table, because I was consistently experiencing dizziness and fainting spells. After about 20 minutes the doctor tilted the table back and I could feel myself passing out. I got severe tunnel vision and lost like 95% of my eyesight, like looking through a straw and then I blacked out. I remember hearing the doctor call the code and my father cussing at the doctor that he killed me. I remember hearing a lot of slamming and banging around, which I assumed was the crash cart and nurses shoving into this small testing room. I felt a pressure on my chest. Like when you have someone stand on your back to crack it, which I found out later was the nurses doing CPR. I saw an array of vivid colors kind of dancing around forming objects in the dark. The scariest thing was how peaceful it felt. Just pure 100% peace. No panic. No pain. No sadness. Nothing just bliss. I coded for just under 2 minutes and as soon as I came to and opened my eyes, I felt seriously angry and hostile, I started ripping off whatever I could get my hands on and yelling at the doctor to get me off the table. Not me, but right before my great grandma passed she kept trying to explain these vivid colors and smells. She kept saying how beautiful things were and she was saying it's unlike anything she ever saw. She was an extremely religious woman. A little while after the colors and smells she told us he said we have to say it's okay for her to go. I mean my whole family was standing around saying goodbye. I vividly remember this even though I was only 9. Once we all said it was okay, she passed on. Also the night before, she was talking to herself. 
We asked her what's going on and she pointed at the chair across the room and said please don't be rude. I am having a conversation with her and we were confused and asked about what and she said the woman was explaining what we were going to do with our futures. So strange and I'll never know if it was real or what was happening. But it's kinda cool to think it's real. When my grandfather was dying at home from cancer, he would often see his sister and brother-in-law. He would tell us when they would come to see him. The hospice nurses said it's very common. It brings me great comfort to know they probably welcomed him when he finally passed. Not necessarily clinically dead but I was pronounced dead two times in the same night after a car accident I was in when I was 16. My great grandma pulled me out of the car and we walked through this really peaceful field of flowers. When I woke up two weeks later she was sitting on the edge of my bed and told me to tell my mom that everything was going to be okay. My great grandma died when I was 10 and before that she had been bedridden after a stroke. I never saw her walk or heard her talk in my entire life. It was amazing and beautiful. My mother experienced a long corridor with arched doorways. One was open and she said she refused to go in. She suffered a massive stroke at 27 to from a spinal tap done a week earlier. Former co-worker of mine died during heart surgery. I think she was out for 90 seconds or close to it. She wasn't religious or anything. She said that she remembered being in the room and seeing her dead uncle and cousin standing at the far end of the room watching everything going on. This actually happened to me Monday. Tuesday morning actually. Was going through a lot of money issues and thought I was going to lose everything. Hung myself in the closet. Fiance found me cast me down called 9. 1. 1. I was blue. Dead in her arms and I pee in my pants. Town gay is still swollen have no idea how that happened. The EMTs brought me back. I was dead and they brought me back. I'm still at the hospital now and don't see me leaving anytime soon. Anyway I saw nothing. Just darkness. No sounds. No white light. Nothing. Black. Next thing I know I woke up in an ambulance. Suicide sucks guys don't even try it. People love you. Suicide sucks guys don't even try it. People love you. Truer words have never been spoken. I'm glad you're okay. Not me but a guy I know claimed to feel extremely at peace before having his heart started again after attempting suicide. He was schizophrenic in a poor country and fell off the map after neglecting his mental health. Felt bad for him but he was not someone I wanted to spend a lot of time with. You have been visited by the magical sugar jar Puggo. He'll only share his sweetener if you comment Sergo please, Mr. Papa. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.